all you people, can't you see, can't you see that Anne Juliet is wonderful. Hello, darlings, and welcome to Performance Perspective, where we watch different performances, whether they're on TV or stage, and then we share our perspective. If you're new here, hey, I'm Kara Darling, and don't forget to subscribe if you love musical theater, because today we are talking about Anne Juliet. This was the last musical I saw at the West End, and boy, was I not disappointed. The show is at the Shaftesbury Theatre, and the plot is, what if Juliet didn't die? You know, Juliet, as in Romeo and Juliet. See, I knew you'd get that. Now, if you don't know this about me, I love to go to shows without knowing too much, so then I can have a genuine response to what's on stage. All I knew was the plot I just said earlier and that it's a jukebox musical, meaning they take songs you might have heard on the radio and they use it as context in the show. Now this doesn't mean that they just take any song that they've heard, usually there's a theme to it, like Rock of Ages is 80s music, there is a Green Day musical, and also uh, Across the Universe has Beatles songs. So in Anne Juliet, they use Max Martin songs. So who's Max Martin? He is a Swedish record producer and songwriter. I think you might be shocked at how many songs that this man has written that we would have, I say in the millennial genre, that we would have grown up with from NSYNC, Britney Spears, Backstreet Boys, Celine Dion even, and tons more. Keep in mind that this man has created over a hundred number one songs on the Billboard list. So needless to say, there was a lot of decisions of what songs to take from him in order to, you know, create the story in the musical. And Juliet had songs from the 1990s to the 2010s. So yeah, I'm completely biased here because they had songs that I grew up with from being a quiet kid to my rebellious college days. They had Katy Perry music and I'm a sucker. They also had NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, Jesse J, Demi Lovato, Ariana Grande, and tons of Britney Spears, just to name a few. My perspective is that it's entertaining, the costumes are next level, the choreography is superb, and the story is very empowering. So if you get a chance to see it and you love the musical artists I just mentioned, then go see it. Here is part of the video where I say I might spoil something within the plot, but if you listen to the soundtrack, I'm not spoiling anything. Um, I'll see you in another episode if you don't want me to spoil the story. Okay, let's go. To get into detail about Anne Juliet, it starts with the preparation of the play that is going to be Romeo and Juliet. We meet William Shakespeare and his wife, Anne Hathaway. Yes, there are jokes to go along with that. Anne has an idea to change the story into a what if scenario. So what we are witnessing is Anne's story, but at times it gets disrupted by William taking the quill and adding conflict at times. Playing Juliet was Miriam Teak Lee, and wow, she's stunning. And I swear at times she looked like a model. She also had talent to back it up, so please enjoy her on the original London cast soundtrack. I also want to point out that the West End really is casting more black female leads, and it doesn't go unnoticed, and I'm for it. I'm happy though that Anne Juliet came out with lots of different representation for different communities like women, black, and the LGBTQ. I'm happy to see progress even though it seems very slow. I'm not going to point out that Phantom has been going for almost 35 years and in 2022, they finally have the first black woman to play Christine. That's not crazy. I'm not going to point that out. The biggest conflict in the show is that William Shakespeare brings Romeo back to life before the first act ends, and boy was I screaming. Also, Tom Francis played Romeo, and I know this is nuts, but I fell in love with him. It now makes sense to me why multiple women fall for Romeo. I'm brokenhearted because he's not on the soundtrack, and his voice has that Adam Pascal-esque to it, like a natural growl. I'm a fan of him, and I'm glad I was able to find some clips of him singing, so we can fall in love together. 
Listen, I'm a fan of him now. He was a farm boy and now he's like performing at the West End. It really is amazing. And you know how hard it is to try and find examples of him as Romeo. So um, in the link description, I will be putting Romeo examples so you could go and listen to him. Okay, in my honest opinion, the other Romeos that I listen to, they have that sort of like Aaron Tivet voice. And like I said, uh, Tom Francis is like Adam Pascal. And I love the thought of Romeo being like a rock star versus, you know, a, a pop star. Like, for example, like, okay, this is a bad example, maybe. This may not be the best example, but I guess for Romeo, the thing I would want is more like Johnny Depp and not Justin Timberlake. I hope that makes sense. Please, God, if we could get a recording of Tom Francis singing Love Me Like You Do, I will be forever grateful. Amen. Was there anything I didn't like about the show? Well, okay. There was one thing that I did feel was misplaced. There's a character named May, and they are non-binary. They are one of my favorite characters, and Joe Foster played May when I went to see it. That voice is butter. At one point, May needs to use the bathroom, but conflict hits as to which one. And after a scene, they sing Britney Spears, I'm not a girl. Not yet a woman. When I saw the show, the audience was laughing at that part, and I'm not going to lie, I was laughing too. And it's not because May in the scene of uh, that their feelings was invalid. It's just the song is kind of funny, so it, it took me out. I also was confused because there's a difference of what non-binary is and trans. So I was wondering if May identifies as a woman. Lastly, did they need to use the bathroom? Because this is a long time to hold it in. But yeah, that's the only thing on the show that I wish that they workshopped a bit more. Or just chose a different song. Anyways, darlings, that's it for today's episode. I would love to know what are your thoughts about Anne Juliet. Don't forget to go to the description. Let's fall in love with Tom Francis together. <laughs> and without further ado, take care, darling.